If you're new to sea -Doo or personal watercraft in general and you're looking to extend your riding season and get out in the cold water, this video might just help you. It's spring 2022 and I'm itching to get out on the water just like many other people are. Uh, but there's a couple of things we have to take into consideration. Where I live is on the northeast shoreline of Lake Erie. And I'm going to show you a little image right now. This is what Lake Erie looks like right now. Plenty of ice. It's all being pushed up to this end due to the winds and the river and the ice boom that's there. Um, but the water is icy, icy cold. And there's two things you've got to take into consideration when you want to get out on the water early in the spring. One, which is the most important, is safety. And second, comfort. And we're gonna address those things in this little video for you. There is absolutely no point of venturing out on a waterway right now if you're not prepared for the icy cold water. Uh, we're into late March. Uh, most of the lakes and waterways in Southern Ontario and probably North America in general at this end are probably just over the above freezing mark, zero degrees Celsius, 32, 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And over the next month or so, they're going to slowly, gradually increase to four or five. And it's not going to be until late May when we see the acceleration in warmth. So in the meantime, if you want to get out on the water in the next few weeks, you're really going to have to make sure you're wearing the right gear to keep yourself safe and comfortable and enjoy your ride. First off, the best but it's the most expensive way to enjoy your riding season is to actually invest in a dry suit. But unfortunately, they can run between $1,500 and $2,500 easily. And it might not suit every rider. So on this video, I'm gonna be aiming for riders like myself. I ride this, which is the uh, sea -Doo GTX uh, Touring uh, sea -Doo. And uh, I spend most of my time touring around doing an average speed, what, 50, 60 kilometers an hour. Uh, occasionally I go out and have fun in the waves, but that's later on in the summer. But mainly I try and keep dry. Uh, I, I've never ever fallen off this. And last year alone, I put 110 hours on the sea dew and never fell off it once. That said though, there's many occasions I got very, very wet and also very cold depending on the time of year it was. Uh, so I'm going to be aiming uh, the gear that I wear based on my riding, which is basically going out for an adventure, exploring and things like that. Now, if you're out on a, let's say, uh, a Sea-Doo Spark or a Trix and you're out for doing tricks and stuff like that and really going to get yourself wet, you may want to look into other gear other than what I'm discussing here. So anyway, first off, let's start off with the most important thing in the winter uh, or in the early spring when the water is cold. You want something that's going to keep you warm and literally protect you if you fell in. The idea is not to fall in because it is so cold, but if you did, you need as much time as you can to survive. And the best thing to do is invest in a decent wetsuit. All right, this is uh, the wetsuit I used uh, last year. I'm gonna put a quick video up as I talk and you'll see this is the video I wore on my first few rides back in uh, May of last year. Uh, the air temperature on the first ride was probably about 15 degrees Celsius, but the water was only around about four or five degrees. Uh, but this really helps. So what I'll do with this, I'm just gonna put that there a minute. Now, usually when I put the wetsuit on, I'll put something on like this, a rash guard, just to protect my skin, uh, stops the irritations from the wetsuit. So I'd start off by putting like a normal pair of swim shorts on, and then something like this, a long sleeve or a short sleeve rash guard. It just gives you that extra bit of layer, protects your skin, stops the irritation, especially on your nipples and things like that. So uh, that's always good to wear underneath your, your, your wetsuit. And then this is a full piece wetsuit. I bought this from a, a company called MEC, M-E-C. Uh, there's a store in Burlington where I got this. And it's got the nice little strap on the back so it's easy to put on. So basically I put this on. This is a three and four millimeter wetsuit which basically means the torso is thick at neoprene it's four millimeters so it'll keep your body a little warmer and uh, the arms and legs are at three millimeter which gives you a bit more movement um, especially in the elbows and in the shoulder which is really what you need because when you're on the cd you will be doing quite a bit of twisting around so you want some movement now if you've got this wetsuit too thick you may find yourself quite uncomfortable uh, this particular wetsuit uh, did me really really well uh, though I did add one or two things to it later on, which helped me improve my ride, but I'll get to that very, very shortly. So basically I'll wear this. It comes, most wetsuits will come up with a nice strap like this. So when you got it on, you can just grab hold of it and pull it up like this. So it'll just, just be like that. Oh, by the way, the wetsuit cost me about $200. 
An average wetsuit is around about a good decent one, is about $200 for what I had. Uh, like I say, I got that one from Mech, but if you go on Google, you can find Quicksilver and other known brands which you can try out. Um, if you're gonna be out on, let's say, the, uh, the Tricks and Spark, you may wanna really invest in a really good wetsuit if you're gonna be purposely jumping in and out of the water when it's cold. Anyway, here's another thing I use a lot. Uh, these were a really good purchase. These are the uh, Sea-Doo five millimeter uh, neoprene boots. Uh, I've wore these on many rides uh, in the spring and also in the fall, and they work fantastic. Uh, Non-corrosive zip, easy to put on, easy to put off, very comfortable. And uh, once my feet got wet quite often because I used to walk into the water to get on the Sea-Doo. So really cold temperatures. Of course, when you first feel the water, it's like, <gasps> takes your breath away. Uh, but within seconds, my feet, the body, my body heat warms the water, which has actually got trapped inside this boot and keeps me warm. So these were really, really worth it. Um, five millimeter, double glued neoprene. And these were about between about 75, 80 bucks uh, plus tax in Canada. So I don't know what they are in the US, but uh, that's an essential item for sure. Another thing you're gonna need is a pair of gloves. Um, I got these from Mech the same time I got my wetsuit. I think these are three millimeter and um, they're comfortable. Um, but I, when I first wore them, were all right. I wore these on my first ride and it was nice. Uh, the weather was nice. Uh, but a couple of days later, I went back out on the water and I believe it was three degrees Celsius, which is this ride you're going to be seeing right now. And it was actually sleet. Uh, the wind chill was below uh, freezing. And it was really, really cold and my hands got wet and, with it, and my fingers were so numb wearing these. Uh, so these weren't really that good. So I've invested uh, this year um, just recently in another pair of gloves. Uh, the slightly thicker, I bought these from a surf shop and when I was in the UK um, just the other week. And what I like about these, and I'll look on the back, they've got extra protection rubber here. So I don't know if you can see that. Now, this is meant to help with wind, and I think my fingers were getting freezing cold due to the wind. So I've got nice grip on the inside, and on the outer side, I'm hoping this extra layer here will keep my hands uh, much warmer. Then on that ride, I was wearing this, which is um, a balaclava, which to be quite honest, um, it was pointless really. Uh, it, kept my, it kept me warm until it actually got wet, and it was kind of like not very good. So on a cold, windy day, it might be good, but once you get wet, this wasn't too good. Um, I also bought this, but never wore it yet. This is actually a neoprene cap, which surfers would wear or anyone who's out in the water in cold weather. So I think I'll be wearing this the next time I'm out on cold water and uh, see how it goes. And then in that video, <laughs> I was wearing these. Um, I picked these up randomly and they're like $25 just just basic ski goggles and you basically put them on and they're great they're so comfortable they like your air breathe but there is a lot of foam around here as you can see quite a lot of foam and I tend to find on the cold windy day the wind was getting in and it was on that particular ride when there's a bit of a wind chill uh, the cold air was getting in under my eyes and uh, my eyes were very very uncomfortable but I invested in another pair of goggles towards the end of the year which looked ridiculous, but they were really good. So just give me a second, I'll grab them. <laughs> these, these were really, really good. They look silly. Look, <laughs> I look like the fly, you know, those eyes. So anyway, I bought these off Amazon. I'll put a full link in the description uh, about these. I think I paid like $39. And uh, these were fantastic. It really were. I wore these towards the end of the season. Um, my eyes could breathe. The foam's a lot better around the eyes here. If I can just show you the much better. Um, I could breathe. There's little holes here underneath so you, your eyes can breathe, but the, there's no cold air blowing onto my eyes. And they never fogged up. And they were so comfy to wear. So these were really, really, really good. I'll put a full description. Uh, of what they are in the description below. So anyway, that's one thing really good. If you watch many of my videos over the past uh, few months or whenever, you would have noticed in my Sea-Doo videos, I wear a lot of Heli Hansen gear. 
Uh, I'm not sponsored by Heli Hansen, though I'd love to be, uh, but this is just a personal choice of gear I like to wear. I spoke to a few other CD riders over the past year, and they all seem to have a preference too of what they like to use when they're out in the water, and what, um, a, a brand that they can actually feel safe and comfortable in. I went with Heli Hansen. I also looked at Gold, Quicksilver, and other places like other companies like that. But Heli Hansen is a name I've known for a very long time since I was a child, really. Uh, growing up in a coastal town in England, uh, seeing a lot of people sailing all the time. I saw the Heli Hansen logo many, many times. And I've also remembered that Heli Hansen is very famous for sailing, uh, transatlantic sailing around the world, yachts and things like that. So when I looked into their stuff, they don't have anything particularly for personal watercraft, but I did notice they do have stuff for offshore sailing, inshore dinghy sailing, and so on. So I thought, you know what, I think some of that stuff might work for what I want it to do. Uh, so after a bit of trial and error and researching, I did find a few products, including this one I'm wearing, which I'll tell you about towards the end of the video. And um, I ended up buying quite a bit of Heli Hansen stuff over last year. And one of the first things I purchased uh, was this uh, soft smock. Um, now it's meant to be waterproof, uh, water repellent, it's breathable, and so on. Now, I like this, this was really, really, really good. Uh, but unfortunately, <coughs> it's not brilliant. And it, I think it's not fully waterproof either. I think in a splash, it was great, or spray. Uh, but I remember wearing it on one occasion where I absolutely really, really got drenched and uh, I was kind of wet underneath. But it is a good windbreaker. A good, uh, so when I went out on that very cold day, I was wearing my wetsuit and I put this over it and I tell you what, my arms and my torso were really, really warm the whole journey that day. Uh, so it does help in that sense. Uh, but I did invest in a better one of these, which I'll show you very, very shortly. So you can pick this up from Heli Hansen. I just found out they're also available on Amazon right now and a few other places. Originally, it was just over 200 bucks, but I believe they're around $120 right now. Uh, so this I use a lot throughout the year. It folds up really, really well. I usually put it in my dry bag and just throw it in the sea do And I've used it on many, many occasions. Just when the weather's not perfect, even on a warm day, when it's not perfect, the wind picks up or you're caught out there and the, the clouds get overcast, you got that little chill. This is really good to just throw over your, your rash guard and stuff like that. You can put your life vest over it and it really, really does help. So yes, a Heli Hansen soft smock and it's unisex. All right, this piece of clothing here it's probably my favorite piece of clothing I bought of whole of last year. Absolutely love this. This is uh, the next step up from the other smock I just uh, showed you. Uh, this is the HP Foil Pro uh, smock. Um, this is quite expensive. You're looking around about 500 bucks for this, uh, Canadian. And uh, the one up from this is $600. Uh, this one's a little, a little softer material. Uh, than the $600 one, but it's exactly the same rating. So it's six out of six for waterproof, six out of six for windproof, and six out of six for breathable, and that's on the Heli Hansen's website. And I absolutely love this. I wore this so many times, and never once did I get wet. I wore this in really rough conditions out in the sea, dew, jumping waves, and all I had on was my uh, Heli Hansen shorts, a rash guard, and this. First time wearing it properly, which is the uh, Heli Hansen uh, uh, soft, Foil smock, sailing smock. So, uh, waterproof, windproof, the whole lot. All right, I changed the top. Oh, I feel much warmer now. Thanks, Heli Hansen. And when I took this off, I was bone dry underneath. Nothing, it was fantastic. So anyway, uh, you got like a pouch here, you can undo this. It's like a kangaroo pocket. Uh, if it's quite warm, you can just undo this and it'll kind of let your air off a little bit. But once the weather changes, zip it all up. Uh, adjustable straps here to uh, strap it on to make it watertight. Same with the cuffs as well. And this was just brilliant. Absolutely loved wearing this. One of my favorite pieces of clothing. And uh, yeah, really, really highly recommend this, uh, the smock. Uh, any type, really, if you want to extend your season. Uh, I'll be wearing this on top of my wetsuit when I go out in the next week or so, because it's still really cold here. And I know this is going to really, really help me keep my body really warm, especially from the waist upwards, if it uh, gets really windy. And this is really, really good. And finally, this. This is the uh, the Skagen Offshore Bib, I believe it's called. And uh, I bought this uh, uh, last year, but I never really got to wear it until we got towards the end of the summer. Because, yeah, I never had the opportunity. But once I started wearing it, I absolutely loved it. This has been absolutely brilliant. Uh, fully waterproof, breathable, durable, uh, very comfy. Um, yeah, with your water boots on or if you've got wellies 
kind of rubber boots underneath, any kind, anything like that. It's really comfortable. It's very easy to maneuver. It's easy to sit on the sea do with it, easy to twist around. And it works great. You can actually just throw uh, like this over the top of it and keep you completely dry. Or oh, there's actually days where I've actually just gone out and uh, just ridden like this, this and a sweater and my life vest and, and just thoroughly enjoyed it. So there's plenty of gear out there for you to wear. It's just a matter of what's good for you. So do some shopping, do some homework, have a look around, uh, look into some of the stuff I've suggested on this video and then uh, look at other companies, what they have to offer. There's plenty out there. Like I said, you've got um, Quicksilver, you got Heli Hansen, you got Gull. Gull's very well known for uh, uh, sailing and things like that. So uh, you don't always have to look for sea do gear. There's plenty of other companies that and look for basically marine wear, uh, sailing gear. Uh, it, it, it's good for personal watercraft just as well as it is for sailing. It really, really is. All right, that is about it for this particular video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's been quite informative for you and hopefully it'll help you out in making decisions of what to buy and what to wear when you're out on the cold water. Um, it's not rocket science, it's just a matter of finding whatever you think is comfortable for you and safe. That is most important, it's about safety and being comfortable, all right? So uh, do some research, do some shopping, go out, look around, speak to other people. Uh, these are the things I wear and I strongly recommend them all, uh, all of it really, so I'm gonna make sure I leave a description uh, below of all the items I have, uh, which I've shown you today, uh, links to where I bought them from and so on. So you can go and check them all out. So anyway, stay safe this year and enjoy the water the best you can. I hopefully will be out there the next week or so. Uh, still waiting for that last bit of ice to just shift off the lake, but I anticipate I'm being on the water probably the next seven or eight days. So I'm really looking forward to it. And I'll be wearing something like this or a wetsuit for sure. So anyway, stay safe and I'll see you all very soon. Thanks.